Morning. Morning. We are live. We are up and on it. We are up and on it. Myself and the wonderful <laughs> Joe Hall. We're going to get into that in a second. We're live at the Zone One Health Studio in Baddow Park, Essex. This is where I hang out these days and wonderful people like Joe also hang out because Joe's <laughs> training here now after just last week. I did the session with Christian Daly, uh, former West Ham captain, Scotland captain and the Zone One team. Joe watched the live and thought, do you know what, I'm going to come over and train with the team. And, and Joe and I have known each other for a long while as well. And we're going to get into that in two seconds time. So I'll let a couple of people roll on with you watching this live or listening to this on the podcast. Um, we're going to talk about the most amazing initiative. It's called Live Life Connected that Joe's created that's inspiring currently over 45,000 NHS staff and partners to level up a little bit, to develop themselves and enhance their well-being. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about this morning, as well as Joe's amazing alcohol-free adventure. I can't wait. All right, let's get, let a couple of people get on and then we'll get stuck into it. Oh, look, there's, look everyone's on. Mm. Fab, it's cool, isn't it? Cool. All right, well, let's, let's get stuck into it. Joe, welcome. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? I'm all right, thank you. How are you enjoying the Zone 1 Health Club? I'm really enjoying it. Yeah. I was a bit nervous about coming first of all, but um, it's been really good. I really like the, the kind of the science around it and the, the challenge. It's just really different. So yeah, nice atmosphere. Yeah, Love really it. And it. Steph, Steph is part of the, the team. My team is amazing. He's Joe's sister. It's just behind us because she's in the gym as well today in the Zone 1 Health Studio, as well as We'll be seeing Cassie and all the team will be coming down at some point, I'm sure. So this morning, we're going to talk about this initiative called Live Life Connected, which is a self-development program, as mentioned, going out to NH staff and partners, which I'm part of as well with Joe. Um, and we're both incredibly proud of. I'm incredibly proud of what Joe's achieved. So I thought we'd get into that in a second. But first of all, let's talk about your alcohol-free adventure. Yeah. Yes, so um, it was Tuesday. Yes, the six. I got hit my three, six, five. Yes, yes. hold on. Oh, I want to see your maraca. I brought a little maraca. <laughs> this is my portable maraca that I can whip out at any moment on, on a short notice. Look at that. Get in there. I know, it's brilliant. So Amazing. Jo Joe is just three, six, five. So it's a double, yeah. double celebration. Yeah, double whammy. So that's that was really good. So um, yeah, where shall I start? So. Probably, I've probably been drinking for as long as, well, had been drinking for as long as I can remember, really. I can remember meeting up with uh, school friends at about, shouldn't be saying this, 14, uh, going and drinking, I don't know, Pomaine, I think. Pomaine, yeah. Do you remember Pomaine? Oh, yes. Oh. But do you know what? Ours was Pink Lady. Oh. It was like yeah. sparkling Nasty. sort of wine yeah. thing. Pink Love just remembered that. <laughs> and yeah, and I can remember kind of, it was just the thing to do. And then I suppose all the things that I did and the friends that I mixed with were all around the drinking. Then I went away to uni, traveled, did lots of different things. Everything was uh, evolved around drinking. So, um, it, and then, and then, shall I just talk about, so yeah, so Steph, my sister, suddenly started to look rather wonderful. <laughs> I wonder why that was. Yeah, and I, and she was getting pretty annoying, to be honest. <laughs> um, and she was going, oh, I'm feeling great, I'm feeling this, I'm feeling that. I was going, yeah, yeah, whatever, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then she gave me a few things to look at and, you know, have a look at this, have a look at that. She'd started one year no beer. So I secretly was looking at stuff and not telling her that I was looking. Right. And then... I signed up, and then after about three weeks, I signed up for 90 days, thinking, yeah, I'll give this thing a go. If she can do it, I can do it. Um, and then, um, yeah, she, um, I told her after about three weeks, I didn't admit to anybody that I was doing it because I didn't think I could do it. Um, and then it just kind of went from there. I just yeah. found it really, really helpful. I was lucky enough to get onto the um, office athlete course quite yeah. early. I think I was about 90 days, I think. Um, and, and that just really helped me to understand why I was, why I was drinking, I guess, yeah, yeah. and found my confidence. Yeah, which is so good to see. And the office athlete is like the Arate Way mm. equivalent now where you and I got to know each other, although we did meet each other prior to that we did. in a random yeah. meeting in uh, Ingatestone in Essex 
in the lounge, which is That's now right. known as Knocker. That's Funny right. enough, Tara was there last night with her oh, friends. Really? But I bet it wasn't alcohol free. No. It was probably, <laughs> they're gonna be in in a minute. We've got a deadlift <laughs> session in uh. the gym at uh, 9.30 and we'll see, see if it was alcohol yeah, free or yeah. not. But it was lovely, so we bumped into each other. We and you did, were like, yeah. I'm Steph's I thought, sister. I recognized that man. I was, I, I was having breakfast with a friend and as I walked up, I went, oh, <laughs> so I was brave enough to go up and go, hello, hi, I'm Steph's Steph sister and I'm starting the um, office athlete course. Yeah. yeah, and you were actually all signed yeah. up, it was brilliant. And then, so how has your sort of that confidence grown and things changed as your alcohol-free adventure unfolded, plus all the new learning? Yeah, well, I, I think I, um, one of the key things for me was the introduction, I don't know when abouts it was, but we started talking about, um, I found the pods and the, the, the accountability really helpful. I was yeah. really lucky, I had a really fab um, pod that you I was did, part yeah. of, so if anyone's on, thank you for all your support as part of that. Um, and, uh, and also the Alcohol Free Essex group. I yeah, found oh, brilliant. They, they, they were yeah. brilliant. Um, you know, just the odd meetups and just generally, generally supporting me along my journey. Um, anyway, so I, I started to read um, So Good They Can't Ignore You. Cal Newport. Yeah, Cal Newport. Brilliant book, by really, the way. Really, really We're doing that book. right now in the Mind Body Gym. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, so, um, so I read that and I, there was a few bits in there that I really found helpful in in terms of the you know the craftsman um, way of approaching things and also the the words like I found words like diligence and you know what was my specific you know what was I going to actually practice each day yeah. what was my dedication to specific practice I guess deliberate practice deliberate yeah. practice yeah that was right sorry um and and I started using my journal um, and actually writing that stuff out. And during the time, because I worked for the NHS and I was working in the instant management area of that through COVID and all yeah. of that, I just needed to turn up and be the best that I could mm. be every day. And so I just just followed that that mindset and really thought about everything that I did and everything and the, every way that I turned up. And at the same time, I was really looking after myself through using the six skills and the, you know, the, all of all of that. And just gradually, I guess I kind of turned into the person <laughs> that I wanted yeah. others to be and, and just found a way forward. And people just started to notice and started to listen to me. So then I started talking about the learning that I was getting and I was, you know, developing an understanding. And... And so, yeah, I think things just changed. Just started to, to evolve, yeah. yeah. So, so Joe was training with us on the Arate Way equivalent, and then into the Mind Body, Body gym. gym, and then behind that was the wonderful benefits that come from being alcohol free. Yeah, you know all that momentum and confidence yeah, coming, definitely. and then exploring all these different ideas, such as Cal Newport's mastery mindset, which is really a concept where you can um, grow meaning and purpose through mastery of a subject, any yeah. subject, and you were journaling that yeah, out. Yeah, I was, yeah. Deliberately practicing, and I could feel the momentum building. Then we started to have these sort of little conversations yeah. around the edges about, oh, maybe there's something I can do. And what's really important about this, before we get to the key point, is that I was talking about this recently with Johnny Johnson on the podcast. I think there's something powerful that happens when you take a break from alcohol. I know I'm biased, but I think you become a dreamer of the day. And I love that concept where actually yeah. you start to get these little ideas and something actually happens, you know, yeah. rather than... You've got the energy to make it happen. Yeah, or that clarity or that yeah. momentum, whereas yeah. I'm sure we've all been there where you've suddenly got this amazing idea after a few drinks and then it never yeah. ever rears yeah, its agree. head in public. Mm. Whereas I just get this sense that people on their alcohol-free adventure building all that learning in the background, things start to happen. Yeah. So what will happen next? Well, then, so we'd kind of, I was going, I've had this bit of an idea and I don't know if people would see, I was kind of, I'd, I'd done an art degree years yeah. ago, but I, I was kind of journaling, right, doing mind maps. Your mind maps are like I, I just works of art. Well, yeah, but I, I just loved just sitting there thinking and, and drawing and painting and stuff, which I'd not done for ages. And I found all this time to do, do all of that, which was brilliant. And then... Um, our uh, accountable officer, so he is the accountable officer across all of those 19 organisations.
organisations about it's called an integrated and care this is system in the NHS. In, yes, in yeah. the NHS, social care, all of you know, mental health, all of the different services that sit within a kind of area. Um, and he was doing a staff briefing. It was in January, February time, and it was really about it was a big thank you to staff about what they were doing around COVID yeah. and all of this other stuff and. I was, I was listening to him, and I do have his number because of the critical incident management stuff, and I thought, do I dare message him and say, I've got this idea, do I? And I can remember being there thinking, oh, and I had my phone in my hand and I was standing up and I was <gasps> terribly nervous, and I thought, oh, what's the worst that can happen? So I just texted him, right. I sent a text message saying, I've really, I've got an idea. And he was on live at the time. So he's talking live he's and you're talking texting. live and I thought, and he was going to go on to somebody else. Anyway, so he went on to somebody else. So I texted him. And even during that session, he texted me back and said, I really want to hear about it. And what did you text him? Can you remember? I texted him, I've had this great idea for some stuff that I think would really support our staff. I'm really keen that we look after ourselves um, as we're trying to look after others. Um, I said that I'd made it work for me and that I was work. you know, I'd, I'd been talking about it to anyone that would listen, really. <laughs> and, he, and, and he came back and said, sounds great, I'd really like to hear more. Um, and then I got another text from him saying, uh, can you make two o'clock tomorrow? And I can remember, probably, sorry, Mac, if you're listening, I was in the bath thinking, oh, what have I done? <laughs> and this text came through and I was thinking, oh, my goodness, now. So there I was that evening banging together as some kind of presentation, trying to get everything out yeah. of my head onto a, um, onto a presentation that I could give him. And on reflection, I probably would have been drunk yeah. if I hadn't have been, you know, yeah. I wouldn't have had the time and the clarity mm. to be able to do that. And that's the, that is the difference, isn't it? That it's just those difference. little moments yeah. in life. And I just want to pause on that particular point because that is really like the, the hero's journey, which I talk about a lot. Yeah, that is that stepping over the threshold but into the unknown, isn't so it? It's terrifying. like that moment of, do I send that text, do I not? That's the dreamer of the day. I've got this idea. You didn't have anything behind it. It was just a few conversations. Mm. There was no PowerPoints or presentations. <laughs> it was like, you're listening to this talk about well-being yeah. for the staff. You know, where, you know, in such a giving vocational environment, people give, give, give through mm. the COVID period, yet the poor staff of the NHS are falling to pieces right. because they haven't given themselves any time yeah. and you've just got I just think that's so beautiful I can just imagine that moment of will I won't I will I won't I oh send it and then boom comes straight back yeah and then literally the next day let's get a meeting yeah so what happens then so and, and as you're talking it makes me go because it still really frightens me just the thought of it it was like it was that literally stepping off a cliff it really felt like that um, and then, yeah, so then we had the meeting. So he, I was going, and I, you know, I was really excited about it by then. And he was going, yeah, yeah, yeah. He didn't really say anything, just yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he went, can I stop you? And I said, yes. And he said, how am I going to stop you doing this? And oh, said, good question. And I said, you're not. And he said, exactly. So how do we help you to do this with Brilliant. your colleagues? I love and that. I, yeah, and he said, so how do we lift you out so that you can do this? And I was like, Really? And he said, yeah, and I don't just want you to do it, because I was thinking of doing it just for the organisation that I work for, which is 100 people. Yeah, okay. And then he said, um, let's lift you out so that you can roll it out across the health and care partnership. Well, then I was like, oh, my goodness. Like, <laughs> yeah. But, you know, and it was brilliant. And he just basically said, I'll help you do it. Just get on with it. The other thing that he said was that was really helpful was... Um, I'd got there, I'd got to a point where I'd kind of got stuck with yeah. some stuff, like you know how it does in bureaucracy. It kind of, and I didn't know how to do this, this, and this. And he said, "Forget the bureaucracy. Run this like a startup business." Really? Yeah. So I did a bit of googling around how to run up, do a startup business, yeah. and I try, and I kind of thought, do you know what? That's you know, it's sort ducking and it diving, is, yeah. and yeah. So that's how I went. And he, if I needed him, it, I didn't need that much. Yeah. But because I had his backing, he, I knew he was there, and he would just touch base with me yeah, every now and again yeah. and say, "How's it going? Do you need anything? Do you need anything?" So it went from a hundred people to now it's up around essentially forty-five. Well, it go, it's gone out across all different organisations, and I've been, I've also be, been out and spoken to education now yeah. as well, and they're really keen to have it. And then I was contacted yesterday by somebody saying, "Can the police have it?" Okay. 
Um, and now we're kind of spreading it out a bit wider because other people have heard about oh, yeah. it. And the other thing is that I've been asked to stop doing the job that I kind of am employed to do and do this all of the time. Full time. Full time. And also people will know that there's lots of people that are on the uh, elective waiting list. So people okay. waiting for surgery and stuff like that, that, you know, there's, there's thousands and thousands that haven't been able to be treated and yet they're just waiting with no date. And so I'm now leading some work to um, get in contact with those patients and check that they're okay. But also we're rolling out a patient facing Live Life Connected this for that so too. so cool, this is so cool. So you think about that, it's gone from that 100 people to 45,000 <laughs> people. Now yeah. it's gone to people on the waiting list because we of the really, COVID situation. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, hopefully yeah. down the line that also need this type of self-development so cool. program. So what is involved in the program? In the oh, in, in our yeah. Life Connected, so it's really similar to the um, what we do in the Office Athlete, I guess. Yeah, and Arate I, Way and the Mind right. Body Gym. It's sort of yeah, a mixture of that's right. So it's kind of, of mind things. and body stuff. I call it a mind and body workout when I describe it. Um, and we have yoga and Pilates, yeah. and uh, we have Russell doing um, stuff, uh, and. We have speakers, so for example, yesterday, and some people may have come along, we had uh, Dr. Nilesh Sakuru. Yeah, who's brilliant, who talks for us, so yeah. And yeah. actually our Mind and Body Gym members were invited to that as well, mm. which was really nice. Yeah, so, um, and we have 12 zones that I found, that it's the one, some of the zones that I particularly found helpful. So what happens is Andy does the science clever bit at the beginning in the yeah. introduction, and I do kind of the, if you like, the, I say the practical application like bits in there. in there. So I have to, I've got over my feet, of standing uh, yeah. so I have to make fit like Andy does you know it's like a Joe and Andy and now um, I've become some kind of guru guru As I um, think Joe's yeah. like the, the green <laughs> so goddess not. do you remember the green goddess anyone remember the green goddess from GMTV <laughs> Diana Moran <laughs> I bought That's a nice green leotard. Have you got it on? I want to I see the leotard. I haven't. I'll send on. you a picture. <laughs> but isn't this beautiful? Like, and this is what I'm, I'm saying to people all the time. It's having the courage. It's having the momentum it's to put yourself out there. And all of a sudden you've gone from the, the area that you're in to sending that text, to gaining momentum, to now being taken out of that area to potentially run this full time. People are now seeing you in a completely different, completely different light. light. The alcohol's gone, you're looking amazing. You have strength, <laughs> training and conditioning and all this wonderful stuff. I mean, I just think it's such it's a beautiful a massive story. massive change, yeah. Oh, well, I have to just thank you and everybody yeah. and the support of everybody. It's been amazing. Yeah, yeah. it really has massive been a change. wonderful adventure. And I'm so proud to see it happen be a part of it in some ways uh, it's been really exciting so i'm just thinking for anyone sort of listening mm. that might be interested in live life connected yeah. through whatever it is they do especially if they're in those type mm. of areas is there a way to find out more or contact you yeah or? definitely yeah yeah through i mean I don't you could know go to team app actually yeah, you could to go team to app. team app because um joe's wonderful sister steph is part of our team who basically just <laughs> runs everything in the background so yeah. if you send an email to team at andyramage.com steph will pick it up and steph can yeah. let yeah. joe know that's right i'm really happy to talk to people about how we did it and you could do the same There's, you know if i've done it you could do the same no reason why not yeah and i think that's really important and, and you know even for me to be involved in more of these initiatives i just want to champion people all the time to have the courage to go out and do it and go into your niches like the oh. coaches oh, i forgot about the coaching we haven't yeah, got to the coaching training as a coach so joe's <laughs> training with us to become an accredited coach as yeah. well which as part of this overall process yeah. isn't it to get yeah. that confident how are you finding that i'm loving that yeah, i'm it's really cool, loving that I've, i did do coaching before i did a, an nhs coaching course and i loved that um but this is like way and above I'd, if anyone can do it i would definitely recommend the coaching course it's been brilliant and it's not just the coaching it's the yeah. background information the positive psychology approach and everything it's just a massive it's really good and it's a really good foundation for me to be using this and it's given me the confidence That's now the to key, do isn't it? Yeah, yeah to do to run some um, I'm going to run some of the zones I've not told you this Brilliant. as workshops just as little workshops yeah. for people because not everyone wants to do it online That's right so, yeah Yeah so yeah, I'm and that's do it like that. and that's my story, and I think all the coaches that are training with us at the moment was that the underpinning of that coaching gives you the confidence yeah, then for definitely. everything else, whether you're doing a Facebook Live or whether you're doing yeah. a workshop. It's it just there's something about that. I think it you is. need that that learning, that education to 
tested yourself because it's, it's it's tricky at times yeah, isn't it you it know is. when you're coaching yeah. other people and learning but then you've got that i know the key word is confidence and i talk about it all the time don't yeah. i that's the number one barrier i think to coaches getting out there and you know helping other people mm. in their niches is that confidence thing it's not even the skills of coaching no, it's, confidence it's the confidence thing. to do it. And it's amazing the way that, because when we started, I wasn't um, so worried because yeah. I'd had some experience. But on the first day of when, or the first evening session, when we were actually going to be coaching, it was just the excitement, well, the, the terror the of terror people, I would say. Um, and then once we'd done that first session of coaching, everyone was like, blah, 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 yeah. really excited. And now everyone's, um, you know, loving it. And it's, it's, Great, that you can see people growing. Oh, and totally. I mean, we, you know, we're in there four days a week with the different mm. cohorts that we run, and it is brilliant. The evolution from seeing the original sort of coaching cohorts mm. to like last night's groups, for example, it's like, it re like class. Yeah, really. I'm, just good. So, I'm really proud of it. And actually, we will be running the next coaching cohorts in January, oh, so it's a little yeah. bit of time, but we will be sort of out there actually filling those places in yeah, the next couple of months really so keep good. your eyes out if you want to know more about that today's yeah. newsletter day by the way if you go to andyramage.com you can get the newsletter and also you can click the link at the top it says become an accredited coach you can sign up for that and then you'll get all the details about when the next coaching course is which would be fab I was just going to say the yes. other bit that's really good of the coaching course is the stuff that you're doing around marketing yes because I'd not thought about that mm. and that's really helped me to think about what is it that I'm trying to offer to the audience to help me to find my niche? And that's really helped me oh. hugely. So, and you don't get that in a normal coaching course. So. No, and that's the bit that I bring. I think it's that mission-led marketing mm, that we yeah. call it, having done this in different guises. Yeah. Because I get back to that point, I know what it is. The biggest stumbling block between becoming a brilliant coach and getting out there is not the coaching skills, it's the confidence getting skills. And it's well. then that comes mm. from the marketing, getting the right people in. So you're working with the people that are in your niche that give you the confidence. Yeah. Because I'm just so convinced and passionate about this. This is why I love uh, teaming up with Joe, And I want to team up with lots of more people on this to get your messages out in your <laughs> own ways to your niches. Because why wouldn't we try and collectively move the needle together? Yeah. Imagine. And you've you're just like moved it in a massive way. <laughs> I was sort of saying, wouldn't it be beautiful if we could team up as coaches together and go out into our niches? And maybe Brilliant. collectively we can help millions of people Joe's already sort of smashed that needle over well, by about 45,000 well, and, <laughs> and counting. That's not a bad start, is it? And a it's so nice when you get a, a message. You know, I've had some lovely messages yeah. from people, just just little little moves forward in their life. And you just get this message and you think, oh, oh my goodness, I've made... It kind of brings tears to your yeah. eyes. It's a real... You know, you think, oh, I've done that. If I hadn't have, if I hadn't have made the big jump and the big leap, then they perhaps wouldn't have done those great things for themselves. So it, you get lovely feedback every day. That is really important. And someone said it to me just recently, a lady called Janet, who's also training to become a coach, was the same thing. She mm. tried lots of ways to, to take a break from alcohol. Mm. And she was about to give up. It was right on that, do you know what? Life of meh, mm. resign herself to this thing. And then she stumbled upon some of the stuff that I was doing, and had the courage to take really? a challenge yeah. and it was the thing that changed it for her yeah, but she told that story with real passion actually in one of the early coaching cohorts to say that she knew that I had to start somewhere like, I didn't have a story no. there were no books there were none of that stuff no. but that you know found that courage like you've done just to go do you know what I just want to try and help some one person and then she relayed that in the way that she feels she has to do that for other people now because there might be one person out there that will resonate with Janet's story yeah. that doesn't resonate with mine or anyone else's, but if you can help that one person, how beautiful is mm. that? And that's what you're getting to experience. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and the feedback that I've had from people is, we really like it that you're being really honest and open yeah. about your own journey. So I, I talk about it like you do. I think, you know, it's out there. I know people are going home because they've had a rotten day and having a glass of wine. Yeah. I know they, they're all in all of those traps. So I'm really open about it. I did think it might be a bit kind of career limiting, but actually it's quite the opposite. It's gone the other way. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's so true. And, and people want to hear from people that get them and understand them. That's yeah. why niches are important. That's why it's so important that it's you mm. fronting this because people have that respect. They know that you know yeah. how they feel, what they're going through. And that's way more powerful. And that's why niches and whatnot are so powerful because then there is that sort of gravitas that you bring that yeah. people respect. And they're much more likely, I think, to pay attention to 
what it is that you're doing. Yeah, and I, I think that the confidence in, in me being yeah. able to do that has, has, has been huge, and I wouldn't have done that before, no way. I think this is so cool. This is the start <laughs> of something magical, so it won't be long before Joe's in a full green full leotard. Green. Oh yeah, I'll have to. I'll get that. I yeah, we'll get that sorted in here at the uh, <laughs> at the Zone One Health Club, which you're enjoying as well, which I'm is really fun. I'm really loving that. Yeah. And just on this note, so we I did the live last week with Christian and Emma and mm. the team, and sort of said, come down because this is a brand new facility. It's absolutely world class, and I want to be associated things that are world class for alcohol free adventurers or people that are trying to develop themselves. And that's what this place is. It really is just a beautiful place. I'll be here a lot more next Wednesday. Matt Pink, AKA Better Life Guy, is coming in oh. to do a live. Next Friday, Emma Prideau, who went from non-runner at 40 to being on track to be the <laughs> fastest ever age-rated marathon runner in the UK, who's part of the Zone 1 team, is gonna talk to me in here on Friday next week. It's all happening, so make sure you come down and see us. I'll be here a lot, but it's beautiful for me as well, because it's turning the online into the real world. Yeah. Yeah, real people. Real it's people. Lovely. And As actually, on that lockdown. note, next <laughs> Friday, all the Mind Body Gym crew are getting together in London. We're turning the online offline. I just think it's so cool. Joe, you've been an absolute star. I'm going to go to a couple of questions now. Yeah, yeah, of course. If that's okay, because yeah. there's loads, there's loads of uh, comments coming up. Goodness, I just thought yeah. we might flick it's to a few of these. Being on the other side. It is. You get to see. <laughs> get to see what's happening. Right. All right. So. Ooh. Sarah says, authenticity is key and you're being authentic, Joe. I love it and so inspiring. Oh, and Sarah Prophet's got some really big ideas yeah. as well around this stuff. So we might end up doing some stuff with yeah. Sarah. I love it. Stevie, I remember your first Men mentoring in a Zoom. Now look at you. This is as good as England reaching the final. <laughs> I'm not having a scale. Oh, that's a quality oh, one. That's lovely. Uh, there's Renice. Look, this is what looks. There's the wonderful Jill. Huge needle swing. Yeah. There's Terry. So glad you're rolling this out to the police too. My son's in Merseyside and I think that is so yeah. important for them too. It is. And I think in these sort of vocational mm. services, these vocational industries, we know this, right? And you're going to experience this as well. What tends to happen is you end up giving so much, you don't actually do the things that you're trying yeah. to inspire other people to do. And suddenly your well-being starts to yeah. suffer and you don't exercise. And I have to mediate that and play around with that mm. at all because I've noticed that in my own life it can happen. And then you see it on a mass scale in these vocational type of industries where everyone's just giving, 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 yet they're not looking after they're themselves. Not looking up, they're falling to pieces themselves. Mm. So I think that's why I, the, the initiative to Live Life Connected is so, is so important, right? Mm. Because I think that's what we need our NHS and our police and to be optimised as best we can because they're only going to ever do a better yep. job for us. Is the oxygen mask... First yes, scenario, it is. isn't it's it? First. I love it. Justine, what an absolute brilliant story. Thank you for sharing, Joe. Oh, That's cool. There's Chris Ann. We've got loads of the coaches on. I'm sending you an email right now ah, after this live. Brilliant. There we go. I look forward to it. <laughs> we'll have to let Steph know. Oh. Oh my God. I just wrote a note to myself. Email Andy right before I clicked <laughs> on this live to chat about executive coaching and how to bring my coaching experience to my school. Would love oh, to talk to Joe. Yeah, this is all brilliant. Happened. Oh my God, Joe and Andy, this is bloody <laughs> epic. I did not realise it had gone this far so quickly. This is amazing. So proud of this Aww. and what you've created. So special. Isn't it yeah, just wonderful? And you're all part of it because you've all encouraged me. So, <laughs> yeah. Andy Garwood, oh, I've got a crush on the green <laughs> goddess. I knew you'd have a crush Andy, on the green I'll goddess. I'll be round. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. Fab. All right, team. Well, okay. I hope you enjoyed that this morning. I will be doing more of this. If you've got a bit of a story you want to share, let me know. Come and join us in the gym because as soon as this is finished, we're going to go behind and train with the Zone 1 team. I'll be here all morning. We've got a deadlift session at 9.30 for the over 40s. What a shame. I won't be able to join in. <laughs> ah, never mind. My wife's coming. She can join in. <laughs> and I've got my new trainers. Yes. Oh, Joe's got new trainers. I'll get my look. This is what happens. You get so met them Metcon Nikes. I have them. They're proper <laughs> like weight training trainers. <laughs> this is what happens. Fab. All right, team, I'm going to wrap it up there. Don't forget, I'll see you uh, live tomorrow. It's newsletter day. Do go to andyramage.com. You can sign up for the newsletter. I'll be on at 8.15 tomorrow to cheer you on. Have a brilliant day, everyone. <laughs> well done, Joe. That was fab. Thank you. See you, everyone. <laughs> Bye.